Hello, everybody. Uh, this is P. Francis McNichol, Phil to my friends, and I purchased a book from the from a vanity author I met on Twitter, and I was kind of disappointed with the content, let alone the writing skill. And I'm going to explain something about narration. Okay, you can narrate, and as you're narrating, give you your own character a lot of character and make him or her very exciting and not the average person who is giving you a story. And with that, that can be part of the story in the lead up to the climax. And that was my whole point about Teal in Below the, Below the Precipice and Patrick in Taken for Granted. A narrator can have many facets, can have many dynamics, and you want to get away from the I, I, the I do this, me, 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 I went to go do this, she treated me this way, uh, they treated me this way. And you can have a perspective from the narration, but you have to be able to transition to the plot line or you're going to have horrible work. Okay, this is my second video when someone called and interrupted the first video. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this brief. And I'm going to read just one page from Unfinished Business. And I cannot really tell you if this is... If this is vanity or if this is a pay you, but whoever it is publishes, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Okay. Because there's so much I, I, me, me, I do this, you know, I look forward to it. This is supposed to be like the Harlequin romance novels of 30, 40, 50 years ago. And in the likes of um, what was that, uh, one movie, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey? Okay, I guess it's a hot novel and steamy novel. This is more, uh, I want to say lascivious, more nefarious, more lustful. And that's all well and good. I have no problem with that. Whatever you want to write about is fine. But giving an honest review and wasting my money, 20 plus dollars with this, no shipping, what transpired was I was on one of these, I followed one lady that said she was an author and then she started, oh, you know, I said, oh, that was terrible, you know, giving some comments about what was written. And she goes, oh, oh you know, it started insulting me oh, right off the bat. And I can tell she has, uh, she has some public persona where she's used to this, insulting people and trying to attack their, their masculinity if they're males. And their intelligence, especially when you reply and you're 100% correct in your English. And whatever opinion you're giving is presented very well in proper English. And she kept on insulting me and I insulted her back. And I've never heard of her. Well, this one lady, the author, Natasha Carter, was also on a thread. And she's a, this is supposedly a new author. And I'm like, well, what have you written? And she said, I've written this and that, and I, I'm, I'm, at least I'm published. I'm like, so am I. So with her, her background, she's still a young author. And I said, well, I am me. I got more information about this book, and I ordered it. And then we had a few uh, communications on I am. I was like, yeah, I, I got it. I'm reading the first chapter in the prologue, and I... I I said, I just want you to know you should work on the eyes and the me, me, me's. And I do this. And this is what happened to me. Okay. And very little we, but very little going off on a tangent to describe more of the story without the narrator seeming so selfish, so narcissistic, so um, egotistical. And you can open up any one page in here. I'm going to try to find the page I had read on my previous video that didn't come through. And I, I'm going to try to find it real quick. 
I found it. Okay. So I'm going to read a, a paragraph in one page leading to the second page. And I counted all the eyes in some of the paragraphs. This is, this is disgusting. This is, this cannot, this can, I guess, literally exist in English. But for t this to cost people money cannot exist. Okay. She has to improve her game. And she got very defensive when I started talking about that. Uh, through I am, mind you, only messages. And she said, well, that's what the industry is. The industry is about, you know, steamy romance. Like, yeah, but you bring the, you, you have the vehicle to bring the steamy romance with your English aptitude, your grammar, your punctuation with your own skill. Okay. Even below the precipice narrated by Teal, I did on purpose, but I went off on tangents in his dreamscapes and actual occurrences like many stories, so it didn't appear like it was just about him being selfish. Okay? And he should have been a lot more selfish than this lady here who authors this. Teal is a fictitious character, but he's being harassed by ghosts, and he was actually disabled with a, a, a crack on his head, and he has to live with that the rest of his life with those powers seeing ghosts that want to haunt him to rectify something or to help him. But for some reason, they did not move on to heaven or hell. Well, that's the burden he has to carry. And at the same time, a good author would make sure it's not so egotistical as he's narrating. Okay. So I'm going to start out with this first paragraph and go into the second page. This is page 100 to 101. And all the pages are pretty much like this. Eyes, 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 eyes. Each page probably has close to 20 or 30 eyes. And as a narrator, you can't do that in any novel. You just can't. Some of the, the reading is okay, but it's so narcissistic and so uh, self-centered in one location that... One, it makes the lady, the lady narrator look like she's a hoe. Okay. She's a whore and she just wants a good sex with steamy, you know, this passion while she's doing whatever on an airplane, you know, traveling or maybe a stewardess. I couldn't get through most of this because it, none of it made sense. It made sense to the person narrating that she wants this one guy and she wants to get laid by him. And go run off and, and live happily ever after. It has little to nothing to do with anything that makes sense. Okay, other than that, it's a conflict. And she said that's that's what today's novels are. And people said she can write, so she should write. Well, those people might not know good reading. And they might not know good English. And they're taking her as a, a friend and saying, well, oh, do what you want. Go author some more books. But some people would say, when you do, improve each time. No one's perfect in this world. I've opened up J.K. Rawlings, um, and I want to, uh, God, I'll find the book one day, but it had a very light blue backdrop, and it almost looked ghostly. I opened up the book, and I read a chapter, and there were so many miscues and, and typos, I was kind of shocked. Okay, she does have some skill because she has a brilliant imagination. These uh, steamy love novels don't. Okay, they don't. But to prove my point, this is just one page I'm going to read. But again, an extra paragraph to start it out. Of course we will. When will you be back? I was already dreading the idea of being apart from him. He had my life preserver. I'm sorry. He had my life preserver the past few days. However, with some distance between us, I might finally gather my thoughts and figure my life out. My to the my word. I'm heading to Colorado for a few days and then back to Cali. So I should be here again in about a week, give or take. Perfect. I held up my mug so we could cheers to that. 
What are you doing tonight, then? I pondered while biting my lower lip. Ooh, that's so sexy. Anything, anywhere, anything, 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 anywhere with you, he proclaimed, making me want to tackle him to the floor and have my way with him. He caught the flash of desire in my eyes because he laughed and said, We'll save that for later, baby. I've got to get going. I pouted, then leaned over to kiss him goodbye. The aggressiveness in his return kiss surprised me. Then pulling back, he said, Mmm, can't wait. He stood up and headed out the door, blowing me a kiss. I caught it in my hand like a total dork. He laughed as he shut the door. I smiled to myself, enjoying how cheesy I was able to be around him, without fear. In truth, my guard was probably down too far given the nature of our relationship, but I didn't care. What would be the point of living if I had to be so damn cautious all the time? Fuck that. I finished my coffee and debated whether to shower before picking up the phone and I and decided I had been putting it off long enough. It was time to bite the bullet. I dialed, hoping it would go to voicemail. Instead, Robert answered on the first ring. Shit. Literally, that's what's written. Shit. Anyways, so I go to the next page, and uh, for instance, on page 103, I had broken my own heart. I knew I didn't have to tell him about Tristan. He was leaving tomorrow anyways, but the guilt would have eaten away at me. I couldn't begin a real relationship with Robert if I had a secret like that hanging over me. I told him for the sake of my sanity. I was also self-aware enough to know it was a defense mechanism. If I pushed him away, then it would hurt less in the long run. At least, that's what I told myself. Ten eyes in that paragraph. So what is, what is, what is the alternative? The alternative is good segues into tangential plot structure. Tangential uh, plot scenes. Okay, interaction with other characters affecting the char the main character narrator. Okay, the main characters that the narrator is talking about. Okay, and going into actual occurrences. I'm going to try to go random here, but I'm going to pick a. I'm just going to pick a uh, open page on blow the precipice, and explain the differences or show, and read more of what the narrator Teal was expressing when he went, went off in dreamscapes and everything or describing a certain scene or describing interaction. And I hope there's more visualization that explains what's going on than just me, me, me -ism. I ran to the back of Ian and instinctively snatched the can from the webbing. I wailed and slammed it into the colder water Stabbing relentlessly, Ian is being attacked by a ghost. White rotting flesh began to disintegrate and spread about. Come here, guys. Give me a hand. Quickly, hurry. They looked mesmerized, yet paddled ferociously hard as the water flew to my rear, turning bubbly and lighter. The paddle crafts rooster tail enlarged. Kill that fucker, honey. Kill the fucker, Janine shrieked. She eyed the turmoil and aimed forward in front of Ian and I, wrestling. The paddles moved to our front and then stopped dead. The older rusted sword was wedged in through the wheel. The women began to purposely teeter back and forth. I aimed and thrashed, unabated, feeling for any of the harder bone. I tired, then focused on the elbow. With an overhead pull down, I slammed and heard the shattering bone crack in pieces. It withdrew and disappeared the last time in the deepening water. Ian fell, for, fell forward, face first on my back. He slid into the water, face down and wasted. Nancy stood up to the rear and withdrew the sword, tossing it back into the depths, squeamishly timid. Ooh, gross. The lady's craft moved in as I lifted him again to turn Ian over. Ian over. Janine stood and bent over, grabbing his suit at the shoulders and pulled. We straddled Ian's torso over the silver pontoons to the front of the pedals and swayed. Janine pedaled as Nancy stuck a foot over, pinning his chest. 
I awaited the fainting and locked an arm around the bracket of the seat, trailing the lopsided float. Stinky gray flesh was wedged in between the paddles and bi-woven chain links. Shit, Robert, you better hold on just so I, just so I can kick your ass if Junior ain't all right. My God, what were you thinking? Janine interrogated. I heard the above angels talk a while and worried more about the frigid ice that consumed my entire chest and head. The death grip I couldn't feel. No, Mom, it wasn't me. Uncle Danny Warfuchs did it. No, not me, Mommy. Dabony Warfuchs, yes, Mommy. I know, Mommy, Ian stated, dazed and traumatized. We made our way back up creek while Ian raised his head in delirium. Some headway was made after I steered from the mud and pushed. The nauseating light dimmed a little and returned, brighter, focused. Like I said, you have a very vivid descriptive concept of events you're relating. I don't mean to sound so rude, but it is rather late. Can we finish? Yes, I understand, but let's have one more and I'll finish the story. It may fly this time with you, and I'd really like to stress the relevance to you before we part for the evening. Keel is narrating. Come on, it's a weekend. How about it? One more. Come on. How about it? It won't take too long. Okay, do you have any darker liquor? Maybe some whiskey or rum? Some cognac? Sure. I'm going to open up the doors, though. Get some air in here. The AC isn't up to snuff. You mind? One moment. I'm in your debt now. I'll try my best. You have some good content, just like I said. Money is money, however. Yep, lawyers to make everything work out just right. I'll be back. Gotta go downstairs to the cellar. Have a lot of bottle work down there, you know, for parties and special occasions and all. Now, where did she put the American stuff? Damn it. There you go. Well, it seems that you still have everything you need. Good family, nice house. Do you ever worry about about going to another place like Westford? I mean, if nothing ever works out, you seem to have a head start at the format. Yes, I've heard that before. Here you go. I'm just going to sip, though. I got these wicked headaches that just pound at my temples if I drink one too many. So I take it easy after I start numbing. I understand. You want me to start taping again, or do you want to submit it further in your writing? Well, I'm going by notes, so it isn't really as accurate as accurate as it could be. Just tape now, tape for now, and we'll polish it later for you. Sure, whatever you prefer. The report is the report, the draft, and all. I think I have a good idea of the meat of your story. Good enough? I'll start then. Go ahead. Where did I stray? Okay, the upstream. Trekking upstream wasn't as hard as it appeared. We circled a couple times, veering towards the banks and all. Ian was in and out of what I thought was REM sleep. Just snoring away until he threw out a yelp or two. Janine and Nancy sighed a bunch and oh shit it a lot. I can go on and on. But much better writing. And that was a, a very, very deliberate and descriptive scene when the main character and his friend are going to the lake to see if they can uncover anything from one main ghost that recently um, killed himself after trying to harm a lot of people at the hospital, namely Ian. Uh, I'm sorry, Ian, uh, the main character, Teal, and the candy striper that Teal loved at one time and fell in love with and married, and that's Janine. And this is when one of the ghosts that attacked the people at the uh, the hospital came back years later and when Teal and Ian, his best friend, were investigating uh, ghosts for any burial finds in the lake um, because they saw this bad guy come back in ghost form, um, what transpired was he attacked them 
in the lake of all places because they were swimming in the lake. But he also attacked uh, Teal's son. And, um, and so it was a very exciting scene to write. That was like one-tenth of the scene, maybe one-twentieth of the scene. But it wasn't all about Teal as he's narrating. It's putting in different concepts with the dialogue, like the dialogue itself with the other person, the actual editor, editing publisher he's narrating this story to, is there and he's he's getting them drunk he's getting him drunk showing hospitality but he wants to get paid for his story okay and the realism is he's talking normal without quotes but the edit, editor publisher is all in quotations and so there's some leeway to go in and out of there of teal talking and then also describing what's going on when teal is not talking Okay, so it's not always me, me, me ism, my, my, my ism, I, I, I isms. It's not all about the narrator, author being so self engrossed and making it almost as if it's really personal. So I'm just shocked that nobody I hardly know online that I bought a book for, from has ever wanted to buy a book. And these I'm so proud of because this right here is Ken Kesey material. This right there, Ken Kesey, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, excuse me, and uh, a million whatever pieces, you know, um, James Fry, whatever the name of his book is, you know, because of that inspiration from James Fry, in that book, whatever the name of it is at this time, I knew I could do one that rivals Ken Kesey, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And it's all here. It's all here. And I'm so proud of this book after reading more, more junk. This lady has some skill. But the me-isms and the sappy, uh, sappy first person making the woman more of a feminist, I want to say predator, okay? That's not passion. That's not, that's not even compassion. Okay. That's like, ooh, you know, I need to get laid every single time because I'm cheating on my boyfriend and this guy really, really intrigues me and he, he really wets my whistle. It's like, okay, that's the content, but the delivery is horrible with so much eyes in this book. Unfinished business. Natasha Carter wasted under 25, about 25 bucks for this. And 280, uh, 300 pages, okay? Look how thick that is, okay? Remember I said smaller fonts? 178 pages, okay? It's much smaller as a comparison. Below the press is, is, is on the bottom. And this is, I'm sorry, junk. This is junk. If this gets picked up at a real publisher, then there's hope for me. I want to outright Stephen King within three years and the amount of content I have on different genres of horror, feel-good, spiritual autobiography in the last 15 years alone autobiography uh the 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 most decorated tack unit from scratch untrained but with their own ideas and skill most arrests on the whole east coast most guns recovered on the whole east coast i want to say most felony arrests on the whole east coast the 1990s bar none and I think uh, a lot of my police officer buddies uh, that passed away deserve it. And I want to make a movie out of it. Something out of the lines of um, L.A. Confidential, great movie. And I don't know how much of it was real, but a lot of it was evidently from inspiration. And the mobsters in the 40s and 50s and when Hollywood was getting bigger and bigger. And uh, so was the mob. The mob was still a formidable um, force to be reckoned with that was moving out west. 
And the, the blue mob said, oh, yeah, we're in charge here, not you. And there was a lot of corruption in the uh, police force. Well, I want to do something like that, but more positive. There is some negativity in uh, that novel when I write it one day, but it will be uh, not a documentary, but it will be a real life occurrence with so many twists and turns. You wouldn't believe it unless it happened to you and you can testify about it, not only in a court of law, but to God himself. And that's what I'm prepared to do with the many, many uh, plots and stories and novels I want to write. I'm trying to get the disappeared, uh, bought 500 pages of short horror stories, mostly ghost novels. The disappeared itself is the anchor story in the compilation of 150 pages. And it's better than all three of these books combined. And uh, probably the feel good, uh, if made a movie, probably done right, The Disappeared would be one of the best movies of the 21st century, bar none. If I had some say in it, and I could work with the director and maybe another screenplay or a screenwriter and develop the screen, the screenplay with extra input. I'm not opposed to that. I'm not just here to bash other authors. What I'm saying is, real deal, Wannabe. Thank you, guys. If you don't believe me, go out there and read these two books. They're vanities. This one was more sabotaged than this one because I won a better business bureau complaint. But this one will take you all over the world in your mind. If you don't understand this, it is it's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, kind of on steroids, well, you know, it's a little smaller version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It was inspired by that. And I knew I could do something just as good. Very different. Very different ghosts. Anyways, thank you guys as I bloviate. Please, if you like this video, please share it. Please buy a book. Taken for Granted by Jonathan Allen. That was my pseudonym. Uh, out of respect to uh, George Allen, the late great George Allen, my dad loved from the Washington Redskins and the name Jonathan I've always loved that name. Uh, so I combined the two, Jonathan Allen. Uh, they're not that expensive. They're under 20 bucks. In some places, you can get ten, uh, both of them for $10 a piece and stay under 20 bucks. Take it for granted and blow the precipice. Thank you, guys. Please have a wonderful weekend and be safe out there. God bless.